Yeah, yeah, yeah. AFC Northerners going down the line. Hey, Mark Herman, aka LA Bengal fan on Twitter, representing the disappointing Bengals. Cool. Mm. Dave Green, I'm the Browns guy on this couch. <laughs> <laughs> Jan David Sutan, Ravens Nation. Chris Atkins, Steelers guy. Steelers guy. Okay. Steelers guy. Steelers guy. <laughs> All right, guys. So uh, I guess uh, start off with you and I, good sir. I think that for the first time, first time, first time, first time was it? five games. This was uh, a one five. How it would have been if you had beaten us? It would have been uh, on that day eleven hundred and thirteen days since we beat you. Yikes! Wow. Yeah. So that, I'm very happy to yeah. have this. Yeah. The Thank last you. time Thank you, you won, much. AJ Green got the ball. Twenty fourteen. No overtime. And then fitting. Is a Justin Tucker, Tucker won that game. Won the game. We'll talk about that right yeah. now. We got to uh, talk about I that. guess I'll just start my recap. We got really good defensive play again out of the Bengals. I mean, the last three weeks, they've held the Giants to 21, the Bills to 16, and the Ravens to, to 19. And we've lost all three games. Why? Because our offensive line sucks. But we're going to get into that. <laughs> um, you know, here's a good clip to start out. So we'll start out with something happy. Here's a tip ball by Dunlap. Intercepted by Maluga, and where we are, right there, we're in the Baltimore red zone. So you say, "Hey, the Bengals, they might do something here." No, nope. offensive line steps up. Here is the following play you're going to see: is Bodine snapping the ball when Dalton wasn't ready for it, and we fumbled the ball right back to him. Not Dalton's fault because he's audibleizing and moving guys around. I guess Bowling kind of touched Bodine, which is the signal to snap the ball, and he just. Snapped it. Well, I so guess was Bowling it. was looking for a split. Yeah, well, uh, you know, whatever he was looking for no, wasn't I, good. I can't, I can't so, really no, all right. no, 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 I tried. No, I tried. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's just typical. Here we were. Defense, they had a great oh, play, man. put us in position. Three plays later, we give it right back to the Ravens. Um, you know, and this game was really bizarre. You had an example of the best and the worst kickers in the league. Okay, here we had a guy, Justin Tucker, that, I mean, we get to the 40 and we get, we stall, we punt. They get into Tucker zone. The guy literally kicked three 50 yard field goals yeah, three. in the first three. half. 57 I mean, yards, 54 <laughs> yards, 52 Unbelievable. yards. Unbelievable. Like I said, we get to, we stall at the 42 and, uh, and, uh, and we have to punt the ball. They uh, get to the 42 and they break out Tucker and he kicks a 59 yarder. So, um, unbelievable. And then the end of the game, we still had chances to do something. We, we were right there, even though, and I called it last week, Mike, we would score a touchdown and Mike Nugent would miss the PAT. And sure enough, he missed his third in a row, but we were still there with the ball late in the game and then all of a sudden our o-line shows up and finds its game again we had what i think five out of six plays were tipped balls from the defensive line they did decided not to pressure yeah them. we had we we legitimately had four tips in a, almost I think it was in a row four, i think it was it wasn't four in a row because we had yeah, it was we like got a first four, four out of five plays yeah. there were tipped balls unbelievable and then the absolute fitting ending to the game what you're seeing here was a strip sack and Andy Dalton loses yeah. the ball. Once again, not his fault. You know, I mean, I don't even think he had finished his drop back when the ball got stripped out. There. Just our O-line is a mess. So anybody wants to know what's the difference between last year's team and this year's team, it's the fact that we can't protect our quarterback. Yep. It's that simple. Um, real quickly, some news. We activated uh, Pyramid off the IR. Um, I thought we would do William Jackson the third, but I think with Geo getting hurt, we needed a running back. And um, I really like the fact that we played Fendulum in this game and, and Nick uh, Vigil a lot. We've got to work in our backup and see what we have. So I want to see that more coming forward in the in the coming weeks. So what's your take on the well, game, Jim? One thing I heard from you is that you're kind of blaming – you're putting the, the blame on your offensive line rather than giving the Ravens credit for their defense. So I'm curious to hear what you're going to say. Well, I, I, I'm, this game is just indicative of the whole season. I mean, we had our chances to do something. We can't protect Dalton. I mean, we, we can't open up running lanes, and we can't. He has no time back there. When when he's constantly getting balls tipped because you're not engaging the guy in a block, or he doesn't have any time. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah, just I mean, indicative of our whole that was, season. That was our whole plan. Um, yeah. That was the whole plan. So, uh, all right. So let's let's touch on the very end of that game first. So what you're seeing here is the very end of the game, and the reason that I want to do this first, we're going to go a little out of order here, is because I just want to show this play. One of the most brilliant end of the game plays. Oh yeah, hey, it's, it's within the rules. Like, it's, uh, 
Just if like, yeah, let them get a safety, but we're going to hold them up in order to make sure that they didn't get it. I mean, that's some really good, yeah, clever yeah. coaching. Um, I also want to, like, uh, touch oh, back that on... Was, that was that yeah, it was. It really was. Um, so let's let's go back to the beginning real quick. Uh, first of all, uh, Rashad Perryman came down with uh, another beautiful touchdown. Rashad Perryman's new logo should be... I, I don't always catch touchdown, but when I do, they're sick as shit. Um, because this one right here... Uh, it's in the first quarter, just caught it, and like you can even see uh, the the Bengals defensive backs just like, no, we didn't get it, and like clearly his feet are in. No, no, you look at the replay, it was a TD. Yeah, it was, it was absolutely a great one. Um, so, Justin Tucker, 57 yard field goal, touched on that earlier, wound up with three of them, and I don't know if you guys saw like right after them, he actually lifted on the 57 yard, he literally looked up and goes, are you not entertained? Kind of like so. He's it, definitely entertaining at the press conferences, too. Um, and um, so the other thing I want to talk about was in the third quarter, this sub sack right here, like, just wrapped up Andy Dalton, completely obliterated, got his hands on the ball, took him down, like, almost a slam. It was a great play. It was exactly what our defense needed to do. Um, there were a lot of great plays that I wish I could talk a bunch about. But um, basically what, what you saw here were a lot of good things that did happen. There was some, like, Joe actually didn't have a bad QB passer rating. Um, uh, West didn't really go anywhere in the first quarter. Second quarter was a lot better. Um, and, I mean, legitimately, if you watch some of our pass rushes, uh, especially in the first, right towards the end, you're going to notice, like, w w exactly what he was talking about. We gave you no time. Like, if it, oh, no. I think it's like 55 seconds to the end of the first quarter, and our pass rush just, like, lines up, and all you see is black uniforms, like, right through, had nowhere to throw to. Um, I, it was good to see, like, you know, it's like us pretty much... Uh, only limited to Eifert and Boyd, and even Boyd couldn't get his hands on much. But Eifert kind of like he started he doing, has, making some moves. He had up one touchdown. Field. He had a couple long plays. Yeah. Um, my only comment would be, where would you guys be? You should almost have given Flacco's contract to Tucker, yeah. because mm -hmm. you guys wouldn't even be in the discussion. I mean, those Steelers would be running away with the division. No, no, if you didn't have Tucker, I, I knock it. You I know mean, what? I, it's it's, it's kind football. Of of your it's football, points. and any way it equals a win is a win. Um, so uh, the we have now made the Bengals one and five on the road, so that helps. Um, Yikes! Yeah, uh, I, I do love us in all black, man. That looks so good for us. But um, so. Some things that like weren't so great about this game. One is that Joe Flacco clearly still doesn't know how to slide. Uh, it was a cup. There was that one awkward slide. I thought he was almost hurt. Two is that we we did learn that uh, Vontez Perfect is now Jerome Simpson uh, because he just flops every time anybody gets near him. I mean, hey. if you look at that, like legitimately, Steve that, Smith that ran was, his that his that helmet up his jersey and he flopped. Basketball. Flop. Yeah, it was a, totally a basketball flop. Um, I will say that like it was really good watching Dixon like if you want to see a badass uh, example of the reason that we've tried behind the line of scrimmage plays just look at the first quarter it's like 12 minutes 16s tossed to Dixon from behind the line just goes and it's perfect and that's the way those plays should work but I just think that I'm not a big fan of throwing behind the line of scrimmage but that's me um, other than that, I mean, like, I don't want to take up too much. He really covered a lot of it. We really, we got a chance to really do the things we needed to do. It was really good to see, like, some of the the run game come a look back a little bit. We still didn't do exactly what we needed to do. It was still good. Other than that, um, God, man, we're going long on this. So let's uh, let's go on to you, bro. Let's, okay. let's let the brownies. Oh, it's my, yeah, yeah. My, sorry. My turn. I know. Let me take this off. Is... I wasn't listening. I had my hat on. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't worth listening to, people. <laughs> So let's get this rolling here. Kessler was removed from the concussion protocol. RG3 was cleared to take hits. We released Joe Callahan. We added Matt McCarrance. Uh, we placed Greco on the IR. That gives us 12 guys that have visited that the IR. Uh, mm -hmm. We've given up 15 sacks in the last two games. That's losing Greco, losing Batonio, losing those guys has really hurt, our, hurt the line. And as the season's worn down, it's become more and more noticeable. So the game itself, we lost 27 to 13. I almost had that shit right too. I called 30 to 13 was the final. Missed it by a field goal. Oh the fuck well. Um, here's the fucking plays I thought were pretty important or that I liked. Uh, the first one right here is the 54 yarder to prior. It was late or early fourth quarter. Really thought right there we were gonna make a move and that we had this game. Uh, we had a fumble. They returned it for a touchdown. We went down 20 to six. 
We came right back because we have a shit ton of moxie and we shoved the ball back down their throats. 21 yard touchdown strike to Coleman from McCown. And speaking of McCown, McCown had uh, two fumble, uh, he was, blah, blah, blah. we had three turnovers all on fumbles. Two of them were for McCown. Uh, McCown also gave up seven sacks. Um, the thing that puzzles me or bothers me is we were one for three in the red zone. Mm. Late in that first half, we had two chances to score multiple touchdowns two different times, and we couldn't do it. We came away with only one score. And I think that that has a lot to do with the running game that we are running out there right now, in addition to the offensive line. And uh, I really, you know, I know Miles Garrett is the, the flavor of the week, you know, as that's the guy we should take with the overall pick. I really am petitioning that we, and I know it's not popular, we trade down, we get that offensive lineman from Alabama, or we go with the running back from LSU. I think that they would make a difference. I like Crowell, I like Duke Johnson, I think they're good players. I just don't think they have enough in them to create on their own, on their own without the offensive line's help. Um, that's pretty much what I got for Brown stuff this week. And yeah, I guess we'll move on to Pittsburgh and I'll put my hat back on. So I'll <laughs> there you go. Don't listen. La 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 la. One of the other happy people on the couch. Uh, the Steelers come in. We break our four-game losing streak on Thanksgiving. Take this in 28 to seven against the Colts. Oh, yeah. Unfortunately, luck wasn't out there for the Colts this week. Um, it was kind of like you know just beating up on your little brother. Um, yeah, what? that was that was. It was a there was no point Sunday watching night the game. game. There was literally like that. Like, <laughs> like what do we do? I mean, why Tolzien? Why yeah, really? Yeah, Tol Tolzien had a tough day. He had a yeah. really tough. Yeah. day. Yeah, with that said, they had chances to they, tie they the game. It was scary. So, the yeah. first half of that game was scary. It's fourteen seven. Uh, that I'm going to jump straight to it. That Pat McAfee fake punt where he completed the pass. He was their emergency quarterback, by the way, right. for that game. Comes in, actually does complete a pass. Walks around like he's all swaggered out and everything. He had that nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if you watch the game, the Steelers mocked a few times towards the end of the game, but right. it was a little scary there. Some of the things I like seeing in this game. Uh, Bell rushed for 120, one touchdown. So he's now got three straight games with a touchdown. Uh, night and day difference from early on in the season. Wasn't sure what was going on then. He's really come a long way. Sometimes it just takes a while to knock off rust. Yeah. It, maybe like, that's what it was. I mean, he, he was out like, for those first few games. Yeah. I think he just, he just took him a while to get up to speed. I mean, trust me, I'd rather he be rusty, but. Yeah. Another thing I like seeing, Ben Roethlisberger had three touchdowns to zero picks. What I don't like seeing about that is all three went to AB. We, I said it before, there's a severe lack of a solid number two receiver out there. Um, it, it just, Martavis Bryant, what, this is, this is all your fault, by the way. There's a couple games we job, it's all your fault. I hope you're sitting at home right now sulking, knowing what you could be out there doing. No, he's sitting at home smoking. Yeah, uh, dude. <laughs> Rogers, that's why he's at home. He, Eli Rogers, <laughs> Eli Rogers has, is doing his absolute best to fill in. He's a solid number three, but not that number two talent yet. I never thought I'd say this, but I actually really miss Marcus Wheaton right now. Um, seeing Bud Dupree get back on the field, he only had, I want to say, one snap against the Brownies. But with him coming in, Jarvis Jones, the, the writing is on the wall, buddy. I mean, you're playing your last few games in a Steelers jersey here. Right, he's good for him. He's been a bust. We're gonna yeah, do Isn't it crazy else. how, like, we're talking about this uh, Steelers Colts game? Like, well, this was boring. Yeah, well, you know, when they're, when they're uh, players, players not there. Yeah, I, remember like, boring, right? I remember the games like 10 years ago when um, yeah. when Harrison and Peyton Manning were there, and every game was a yeah, barn no, burner. Yeah, no, it was exciting. Oh, yeah. Total yeah. barn burner. Not we this beat one. the shit out of these guys for yeah. the past three years now. Mm -hmm. So, is that good? Yep. All right, so moving on to previews. Previews, well, we go home to play the Eagles, who are another struggling team. If you watch Monday night's game, they had serious issues with uh, protection yeah, for wins. Really so good. this is actually a game that's a very winnable game for the Bengals because the defense <laughs> is playing well. It's going to be an ugly game. It's going to be a low-scoring game. Um, but I just can't be guaranteed or even feel good about it because of our own line. Um, I mean, when you call teams to 16 and 19 and 21 yeah. points, and you can't and you can't win those games. I mean, your yep. defense is doing its job. It's going to be a low-scoring game. I'll, you know what? I will say the Bengals find a way to lose an ugly one, 16-12. By the way, mm, that 12 wow. points. I'm going out on a limb again. Two touchdowns. 
two missed PATs. If that actually wow. happened, or two touchdowns, we missed the first PAT by Nugent, and then they go for two and don't get it. So, but either way, because you could tell the Bengals oh, were not no confident way. on pushing wow. Nugent out. We got to the 38 or 39 yard line, we punted. So, I mean, that's the difference between having a Justin Tucker and, and having nobody. I, there was a tweet by Chad Johnson where he said, I love pressure situation, and we know he plays soccer. We know he can kick. Hell, bring Ocho Cinco in just for last <laughs> for the last few games of the year. Come on. I, I can't believe we haven't cut Nugent yet. Please. Uh, I guess it's not going to happen, but... But uh, it's uh, it's so entertaining to see a Bengals fan like in the regular season, not like yeah, we're doing great. You yeah, know, well, it's, a, it's been a, it's been a while, and you know what? It's kind of like when you have a great round of golf, and then you have a bad round of golf, and you start appreciating how all the putts oh, were dropping yeah, that day. Well, it's yeah. the same thing here. We had five great years where where we played great football, so I think we kind of took it for granted, just assumed we were getting to the playoffs. We're not, mm. so. Um, you know, uh, we'll you know appreciate it, and maybe it'll make them it. hungrier next year. Because the roster's there. Like I said, if we get rid of Marvin Lewis, and the signs are we're not, but if we did get rid of Marvin Lewis, this would be a coveted coaching Two position. more years on that contract, I don't think One more. Not, one, one more. One more year on that next contract, year. I don't think it's and not. Right, guys, we got to move on to the Browns. That aren't working for him. All right, guys. Get to the Browns. Let's go for it. My turn to talk. I'm going to take my head off again. There you go. It's on. It's off. It's on. It's off. So we got the bye. Us in Tennessee. We're the only two teams left in the league the week after Thanksgiving that has a bye. I think that that's kind of bullshit on the NFL yeah. schedule makers part. Um, I don't, I'm, I actually opinion. agree. I think they, you guys should have had, we should have had two more teams earlier in the earlier season with in the, the bye. Yeah. The bye should be done by now. We can't lose, we can't win. All we can do is figure out what we can do to get better. Um, I know as a Browns fan, we've kind of turned our attention towards the draft and that type of stuff. I kind of touched on it a little bit in the review. Um, I really think, though, the key is just to, for the team themselves to stay positive, to continue to come out and play hard, uh, to practice hard. We're going to get our first win eventually this year. Um, I may be the only Browns fan at this point in time that believes that, but I firmly do believe that. We've got games coming up against who? You know, us. Yeah, who, who, who are you going to beat? Who are going to beat? We've got Cincinnati yeah, at home. Us. We've got the Bills in Buffalo, winnable. Yeah. We got San Diego at home, that's winnable. And we got Pittsburgh on the road. That is that's also winnable. that is another winnable. No, but you got three teams there that are all thinking they can't tank, but they all would be better off not winning an extra game. Yeah, we're we're sitting sixth right now, mm -hmm. and we win another game, and maybe Jacksonville doesn't pass us. See, Jacksonville yeah. has three wins too. It's true, so it's, it's true. one of those things that that San Diego and and us and Buffalo might all be thinking draft. You never know. Yeah, let's right. just uh, use the offensive line. Let's use this time to get uh, all the guys that we're going to put in there, especially since we lost Gretko. We're going to start some new guys right there. Let Let's just hope that they gel really well there, and we can put something together and come up with a win next week. Yeah, I mean, honestly, it's what we did is whenever we went on our bye. It sucks that you do have to go in so late, man. Really and the Browns yeah. won't lose yeah. this week. Browns won't lose this week. Yeah. All right, guys. Long so, uh, back over to Ravens real quick. We are playing oh, Miami. <laughs> We're playing Miami at home. Um, honestly, this this game, I, I don't even know how to call it. I was remember you guys remember uh, Alex, uh, the girl that was uh, she was on our show yeah. before talking yeah, about yeah. officiating. Santa Hill's not so a she, Exactly. He's a yeah. Honda Civic of quarterback. Civic. Yeah. So I actually I talked to <laughs> Alex today. Uh, by the way, congr congratulations to Alex. She is pregnant. Oh, uh, hey. So she's excited to come back onto our show at, at the end of the season to talk about officiating whenever she's like a boy. There you go. <laughs> um, so anyway, we were talking today, and legitimately, neither one of us had any idea how this game could actually go because, the, I mean, it's split right down the middle. There's literally anywhere between a two and a half point difference to a one and a half point difference in this game. Some people are calling it 24-18. Some people are calling this game like 21 to 20. Like it's all over the map. Here's what I know: um, is that three key offensive linemen for the Dolphins are out. Uh, if we can blitz Tannehill because of that. I mean, which we're probably going to wind up doing anyway, and limit Jay Ajayi. Uh, I always say his name wrong. Ajayi. Ajayi. I don't know why I always fuck up his name. I know that name yeah. very well. Jay Ajayi. Like he, we, the 49ers held him to 72 yards uh, in the last in the last time that they played him, and they're like the worst at run defense. So if we're the number one in run defense, I think that we might have a shot. Um, honestly, like I, I predict that this field, uh, this whole game is going to come to nothing in the first three quarters, and then 
like two field goals each team. Uh, I think that it's literally going to be Nine either three. a very. It, I think it's going to be a very close game, or it's no, going it's to gonna be, be a close game. It's yeah. gonna, I think it's going to be a close game, and I think game. it's going to come down to, to kicks. Um, I think that uh, if twenty four twenty one Ravens. Okay. I think 24-21 Ravens. Too it's many, higher scoring. Too many touchdowns. It is. It's going to be more field goals. The, the thing, I, I think that the reason, though, no, that I'm thinking games. that, honestly, on both sides, is because we don't know if Jimmy Smith is back in. And uh, I, Sharice Wright, and Tav- Tavon Young's shown a little bit, but Sharice Wright is garbage. Uh, Matt Elam was in for Webb here and there. It was still, like, he wasn't really that great. He was horrible. Um, but, I mean, personally, I think that, you know, yeah, you can make your prediction. What is it? But I think it's going to be I think it's going to be higher people think because of mistakes. 24-21. Ravens. Nine. 13, All right. Nine. Steelers are coming back home. We're going to take on the Giants in Pittsburgh. This is not really the team that you want to be playing late in the season. No. I mean, this is right around the time when if they're going to make a run, it starts right about now. A little worried about this game. Happy it's in Pittsburgh. That's one thing we have going for us, but a little worried about it. You have nothing um, to be scared about me. God, you dominated <laughs> you know, right? the fuck out of them. We had more first downs. Mm-hmm. They're, they're such a hot and cold Freaking, team, though. No. They're you such a what? hot and cold if team. If they play, if the Steelers play like they played in Indy, they will lose this game. Yep. Yeah. You let Tolzien yeah. take two drives, and if it wasn't for two goal line stands, you guys are tied at 21 against Tolzien yeah. and a luckless Colts team. It so was scary. You, it was yeah. really scary so, out there in the beginning. Um, one thing I, I do like about this matchup is they have a pretty sorry run running offense right now. Um, Jennings only has 400 yards. He's their leading rusher. Only five rushing touchdowns. Uh, not worried about these guys on the ground. So if they're going to beat us, it's going to have to be through the air. I see Beckham possibly getting two touchdowns in this game. I, I mean, I totally see that happening. Two? Um, two. Their, I think he's going to get two. Their strength okay. is passing. Yeah. Your weakness is pass coverage. You but we're not giving up that many passing touchdowns. We're giving up tons of yards, not that many touchdowns, though. Yeah. So, Artie Burns, you got your work cut out for you. Yes. Um, this is going to be one of the first games where you're going to really okay. see Jarvis Jones get phased out, Bud Dupree come in. We get 11 sacks in the past two games here. 11 sacks in the past two games. So, I think if we can continue that that trend. But who have you played the last two games? We played an awesome, awesome kick-ass Browns <laughs> and the Colts. And well, 11 sacks. Oh, oh, my gosh. Oh, my God. Oh, man, I can't believe, can't believe the, it. The worst offensive line in the league, we took advantage of. Thanks a lot. Thanks <laughs> a lot. I'm just, I'm just could illuminating. This be, could this be the week they rolled Justin Gilbert out? <laughs> I, hey, hey, why not? Why, we're going to need someone back there in pass cover. I think Beckham, he could torch us. So as could. long as, as, long as that, as long as that does not happen, happen, as long as that does not happen, I see us taking this one 35-27 at Pittsburgh. I think it might turn into a bit of a shootout towards the end. Okay. Ah. You do realize that the giant defense leads the league on points allowed. Yes. Yes. Landon Collins is a beast. Yeah. They lead the league. They're good it. at stopping the run. They pressure the quarterback without blitzing. That's their big strength. They rush their front four. They don't have to blitz, okay. and they get there. But yep. Luck does not play defense for the Colts. And we we whip their ass on offense. I mean, Brown had a hell of a day. Bell comes in with 120. If we can continue that. But the Colts, are, the Colts aren't leading the league in points allowed. <laughs> I, get I love this show. I get it. So much. I get it. I love Show. In Pittsburgh, though, in <laughs> Pittsburgh, that's, that's the biggest thing you have. All right, all right, right. Field. The offense okay. plays incredible in okay. Pittsburgh. So. All right, guys. So right, it'll be interesting well, to see. Did you make your prediction? Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay, yeah. Cool. it was like 30 seconds. All right, guys. So okay. now it is our two-minute uh, two warning Reddit mailbag. What happens here is that we have two minutes to answer all the questions, well, as many questions as we can that we got all from Reddit from the uh, from different uh, so subreddits. So so everybody good to go? Everybody ready? ready. And starting off with Steelers questions. Chris, if the Steelers don't make the playoffs, with which coaches, if any, get fired? Tomlin will not get fired. Um, De- or Haley is sitting as pretty as he can possibly be. The only guy I could possibly see, and I don't know his name, the wide receivers coach might be up out of there. There is very, very poor receiver play this year. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for the Ravens, end of uh, season record prediction for all four teams. Real quick, what do you think your season record is going to be at the end of the, of the season? Uh, four, 
And whatever's left. <laughs> four <laughs> whatever's left. Four wins. That would be four, four wins. Twelve. Four yeah. twelve. No, we got a tie. Uh, yeah. four, four eleven four and one. one. Four yeah. eleven and one. I think we have one more go. win. Go. I answered this question on the Raven subreddit. If you're looking for my answer, go find it. Right <laughs> don't be a dick. <laughs> no, I honestly did, and I don't want to contradict what I said. I, I gave an answer for all four teams. Okay. Right. Question. Uh, I'd say for the Ravens, sure. I, I, you know. I think that we'll wind up going like, uh, my, honestly, I, I think we'll go eight and eight. I think we'll wind up going eight and eight. Mm. For you? Oh, if you're going to say that, then I'm going to say nine and seven so we can squeak into the playoffs. Yeah, good luck with that. Okay, All right, so moving on to uh, no so Browns. Uh, what would you, if you could create uh, a five-point plan to fix the Browns in 2016 with one word each? What would it be? Offensive coordinator, offensive line, secondary, depth. More depth. All <laughs> right. All right. Um, so see, uh, let's really see if we can find one of the Bengals. Uh, at the end of the season, when Marvin Lewis is forced into retirement, do you believe any of the coaching staff <laughs> remain for the next season? Do you think, and what was that? Any of the coaching like, staff remain? At, any, at the end of the season, when Marvin Lewis is forced into retirement, do you believe any of the coaching staff will remain for the next season? Um, no, they'll let a coach build his own staff. Yeah. There's a new head coach, new coaches. Put, All right. put him in the front office. Yeah. Uh, I would it. like them to get fired, at Hugh get fired and come home. So <laughs> come home to the job that he should have been waiting for. Last one, guys. Last one. Uh, what's your guess at the average age of a Browns fan? I'm going to say a lot of them have bailed that are under the age of 30. So I'm going to say the average age is about 32, 33. 32, 33. Okay. And uh, for all of us, uh, do we have any surplus alcohol for our subredditors? Yes. We have, uh, we, have, we we drink heavily. Are you kidding? Have you seen the Bengals play? Yeah, I know, right? I can't be sober and watch that. All right, that. guys. So that is our AFC North two-minute warning Reddit mailbag. Uh, thanks again for sending in your questions. Really appreciate it to all of the subs, including you, our NFL. Looking at you, cuties. Um, all right, guys. So uh, let's go ahead and thank our YouTube subscribers. New subscribers this week. Movie Empire. Thank you. Barry Melton. Thank you. And JC Zombie. That's a zombie. Thank you. Thank you very much, guys. We appreciate you subscribing. Don't forget, if you want to send in your questions to us, you can do it right through here, afcnortherners at gmail.com with the subject line mailbag. You can also find us on Reddit, Twitter, Facebook, all of it. So all please these. feel free to reach out to us. We love hearing from you. Uh, and we're going to sign off as we always do with Fuck the Patriots. Patriots. Bye, everybody. Next week, guys. Help us out on Patreon. You guys smell that? It smells like up dog. What's up dog? <laughs> Nothing much, man. So do you. All right. Let's get started. Hey, fellow Northerners. We love the show. We want to make it even better. You may have noticed we started showing game clips, and we have even more planned for you guys. So we need your help. We started a Patreon page to bring you our show commercial free for less than five dollars a month. For less than the price of a great barbarian knit octopus beanie on Amazon, which is actually a thing you should look that up, you can help make this show even better, including instant reactions to each game, a weekly podcast, in-depth analysis, and much more. If you want to help us improve and you can spare a little change, go to patreon.com forward slash AFC Northerners or click in the link below in the show notes to subscribe. Exactly. We appreciate every one of your views, your comments, and your emails. Thanks for watching, and as always, Fuck the Patriots! Thanks, everybody. Thank you, guys. Look at me! I'm Dr. Zeidberg!